I'm Stuart, I'm Alan, and together we are Outdoor Basics. Cool. Today what we're going to do is we're going to have a, another attempt at making some natural cordage. Um, one of the guys that uh, Alan knows, Andy, uh, Andy. Yep. was asking uh, if we could, he, he could see how we've done it. We put some pictures up on the Facebook of doing it last week. Um, and, and we're, we're going to kind of give you a show at doing it just now. Um, we had a wee practice earlier on and made a wee bit of natural cordage for, for the fibres uh, stingy nettles. Um, but it's quite thin in it, it's quite thin. Um, but we're going to try and do it with the brambles again. Um, like we said, we, we don't really keep it for, for you really, like, this is all a learning experience. Like I've had the theory of this before and I've practised it once or twice. But I'm by no stretch of the imagination a natural cordage or guru. Um, I've never really done it, so I'm going to give it a whip. Um, we managed to like knock it, like knock it together that way. Um, but the reason we're using the brambles was something that can I, I noticed recently. I can't remember who said it on YouTube, but it was actually another YouTuber. I think it was something. Uh, oh, it'll come to me. It'll come back to me. Yeah. But the guy basically was showing the fact that brambles are better because you don't need to process them as much. You can just use it straight all as it is once you take it, once you strip it off and it's a slightly thicker cordage, it's better for making shelters. Because um, the kind of thinner fibres of cordage are for more intricate stuff. But for knocking up an emergency shelter, uh, brambles are probably best. So I'm going to have a go. Like This is like the third time I've done it. And I'm not really sure how this is. What's good about Brambles as well, I think, like the dude mentioned it and I thought it was great, his name will come to me. Um, is these are much longer than nettles. Like I cut this quite short, but they come in like massive lengths um, and they're abundant. There's brambles everywhere. I think you kinda want it a bit greener. I don't know if this is maybe how this will go. You want it quite quite uh, quite young, so it's supple and fibrous, it's not dry and brittle. Because you know brambles dry out as the year goes on. You can see at the top it's quite fibrous anyway, so I'm going to get a hold of this and just use the spine of my knife. Use the blade edge to just trim some of these off. I don't want to damage the fibres, the outer, the outer core, because I'm just going to use the entire thing. How strong do you reckon that the cordage would be once it's made up and all that sort of thing? Z Outdoors. Oh, is sorry. That yep, sorry. Right. The guy it was oh. it was the, the YouTuber that done it was a guy called Z Outdoors. So if you haven't subscribed to him, go and do that because he's awesome. Um, I can't remember the name of the guy that was teaching him. Sorry, oh. the guy that was teaching Z Z Outdoors about natural cordage and how to do this. He said he weighed 85 kg. Oh, right, and he, had, right, he yeah. had dangled off it and it held him. Right. Um, so I'm assuming quite strong. Kind of like Zed Outdoors, I suppose, in a way that I've always had a military mentality kit based yeah. approach to this. And as we are getting more into it, I'm trying more, like I, like I said before, I always slag people that were into spoon making and the craft side of it. So I'm just now, once I've scraped it, using my sleeve to just get any other wee bits off. And that's no bother. Um, but as I get more into bushcraft for a hobby rather than like, I don't know, like a military style, you know, so uh, I seem to be getting more into the craft side, mm -hmm. um, as it were, I, I'm having a go at making natural cordage and stuff, so this is stuff I've been taught the, the theory of, but never done it, really. Right. Like, we've done it a couple of times, but right. this is like the first time I've done it like this. So yeah, uh, Z Outdoors was the guy that I seen do this, um, and I, he had like a... He's way ahead of us on it. He, he had like a whole series for this guy that teaches like natural wilderness living, um, and I'm sure the dude said it was 85 kg. Aye. I'm sure it was 85 kg. Because he held himself up on yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so once they'd done that, kind of got it here, and then we'll just get it go and try and kind of beat it. So they kind of broke the fibres off.
here, like a much simpler, like a, a kind of, he, he done it a finer way and stuff. But the bit at the end that he, he showed that I thought was really interesting, that I personally wanted to try, was just how to process it really quickly and simply um, for making a shelter. And I thought, yep, that's what I'm interested in. So it's more like the the skin of yeah, it that you're yeah, trying yeah. to get. Um, there's ways of making it a bit finer, where, like I say, you can scrape all of this green stuff off and scrape it down, mm -hmm. get the initial sort of husk off, I suppose. And then when you beat it, you get much thinner fibres. But the way done at the end, which for me was what I was interested in, um, was he, he knocked it down like this for, for getting getting it together to make a shelter. Um, and I, I just found that really interesting. That that for me is what I was I was wanting to to get to. So yeah, um, and then we've got this kind of fibrous stuff here. But this is the bit that, that's, that I have seen before. Obviously I'm going to need to weave more in as I go to, to get longer bits. You can see that's quite a long strand to start with. And we've got quite a few bits. Um, and then you've got the main sort of pith husk there. Um, I don't want to fold it directly in half because then it will make it harder to weave in as I go. So if I take it back a bit there, yeah, um, it will make that easier to weave bits in with. Okay, so this is how we start the kind of plaiting process. Um, I think that's what you call it, pleating, mm -hmm. plaiting, twisting, I don't know. Um, so we just grab a bit um, and it's already starting to dry out. Like you can feel it drying out. So if you need to just wet your fingers and wet hat a bit um, to A help you have some better dexterity and B stop it tearing up. So all I'm going to do is I start to twist back and forth, kind of like you're wringing a tibble out. Twist one hand away, one hand towards and you'll see it naturally starts to like curl at the top. When I get that I just pinch it and get it off there. Then what I'm going to do, the side that's furthest away from me, I'm right handed, twist it away pull it underneath. So the one that's here, I keep it nice and tight to my thumb, twist it away, over the top. Twist that away, over the top. And I'm moving my fingers down as I do it. Twist that away, over the top. Twist that away, over the top. And I'm just chasing it down, keeping it nice and tight as I do it. So I twist away, pinch underneath. Twist away, take it underneath. Twist that away, take it underneath. And you can see already starting to like plait up nice and nice and tight. As I get to certain bits that I feel are maybe too thick, I can take a strand out, and just take that take that off. There we go. So away and back. Once you kind of hit a rhythm, it's not as bad as you think. See it there, starting to come again. So yeah, you can start to get it together quite quickly. And I'm not saying it's the most aesthetically pleasing um, 
you know, but it is, it is strong. Mm -hmm. You could knock it up together really quickly and start to do stuff with it. You could start to build, you know, your, your camp up with it. Um, you know, hold kit together with it. You could definitely start doing stuff with this. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very easy to process, as you've seen. It was very, very simple. Um, even if I didn't have my knife, I could have used a stone to get the initial right. spines off. Um, and I just used a stick uh, to sort of break it down. But like as I said, you'll notice that I didn't leave it all the way down. Yeah, like I, like I didn't have them both the same size. So I'm just going to skip ahead to like here. And then I'll quickly do this for here, yeah. So when I get to the point of this here, and I want to add a piece in. So I've just kind of, as you can see, I've got the cord there. It's coming down and like I said, not the most athletically ple aesthetically pleasing, but whatever. So I need to, I've got to a point now where I need to add a bit in. So I get a bit about the same width. I'll just wet that again. I'll wet that again. And I just line it up. Where I am there and I just pinch it. So I take the twist, go away, twist, go away. And I just move it in, like that. Only thing is it is killer in the thumbs. I think like the Game Boy generation, <laughs> smash it. And that's that, fully pleated in. See it, yeah? No drama. So again, I'll just quickly show you for the bottom. When I get to the bottom, say I'm here, I just line it up and just continue twisting it in. I'll just play it in no problem yeah cool so yeah like like we said we don't sort of like, like claim to be masters of everything Naram was just trying it with some nettles mm -hmm. and stuff there um, we don't we don't claim to be masters at every element of survival or bushcraft because anybody that does is kind of kidding themselves right. on like, everybody's got elements that they're, they're weaker or stronger at um, for me the practical field craft side administrating yourself and being in the field, especially from my background, is far easier. Um, I, I don't find that a big issue. And kit based and always, you know, having the right bit of kit and the right pouch, correctly waterproof, ready to go, very military mentality is how I am. Um, and I think that's great. But as I explore bushcraft as a hobby, I'm getting more into the sort of the different side, mm -hmm. um, the fun side, you know, making things like making spoons and bushcraft chairs and you know trying to make cordage and i'm even trying to make a cooksa and stuff like that getting into more of that side of it as opposed to just the hardcore you know military or, or survival skill set um, i'm actually trying this for fun and just getting out and getting used to it and it's actually really cool to come out and be making stuff like this yeah. and the thing is you could just put that away yeah you know. Like, you know, yeah, sit down for five minutes and then go back to it and keep doing it. So I'm really enjoying it. I think something we're going to do before the end of the summer. Um, we've done a, a winter bush leaf shelter, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Like, a, 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 with no tools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What we'll do is, let's let's just call it, we'll say it now. Right. We'll do a, a standalone shelter built with cordage that we've made ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, we'll do a, a no tool shelter making cordage and stuff like that to Aye. put it all together. Cool. So we'll try a, a different style. So yeah, Zed Outdoors, um, he's a really cool guy, I like his videos, and, and God forgive me, I can't remember the guy's name that was in the video with him, but he was an expert in this sort of stuff, uh, so you know, give you guys a check out. If we remember, we can always put it in. Yeah, Aye. yeah, cool. Um, but for us, this is kind of, like I say, us exposing ourselves to maybe one side of bushcraft that we haven't done before. So don't hide away from skills that you maybe only the best at, just get out and get it Aye. done. So Andy, I hope that was uh, remotely helpful for you. Um, if there's any questions or anything like that, bang it in the comments and just let us know what you think. Also, he has a, a bushcrafting yeah, channel yeah, yeah, yeah. as well. I think it's uh, Waymaker Bushcraft, so go follow that as well. Yeah, go and follow that as well, that's cool. Awesome. Oh, don't forget, uh, like, share, comment, subscribe, and all that good sound and stuff. So I've been Stuart. I've been Alan. You have been awesome. See you next time. Thank you.